So students at my school built an ugly red painted ROV that's on the cart. And someone said, hey, would you like to have a submarine for your school? It had done 10,000 hours underwater and had to be completely rebuilt to, and Coast Guard approved. So that's the submarine. And wow, what an idea for high school students to have their own submarine to rebuild. That girl, wonderful young lady, has a degree in mechanical engineering and a degree in aerospace engineering. And so the excitement of having a submarine uh, really thrilled everyone. But then the school district wouldn't let us have the submarine because insurance. Check out the company C Magin, S E A Magin, and check out what has happened to their submarine designs now. The company was founded by a former aerospace engineer. He finished a project and he decided he'd start his own company and instead of going up, they would go down. So you really should look at the C Magin website to see what their current submarines look like. Absolutely amazing. That submarine in the yellow one is capable of diving to a depth of 500 feet. And we were going to check on the condition of the ocean bottom. So if there was a future oil spill, we would know what had happened. Uh, one amazing innovative idea. I'm pointing at a thing called an airbag. And when you want to submerge, you take the air out of those airbags and down you go. And those hollow tubes don't have very much drag. So you can go through the water with less electricity needed. Again, an aerospace engineer put his ideas into going deep. Hi everyone. So I have here an organic vegetable wrapper and if I cut the plastic and take that loop and break the loop and now rub. I am stripping billions of electrons off this plastic and because it's a non-metal it stays stripped off. It's an insulator. And so what happens? Whoa! Like charges repel. All of the strip got the same treatment and opposite charges attract. So there's two kinds of electricity. We call them positive, the protons, negative, the electrons. And I have a question for you. What was the first time people ever saw static? Well, it was a long time ago. Rich people had combs made out of fossilized tree sap called amber. Beautiful. It looks almost like a plastic it's beautiful gold. I wonder what did they call the amber? Because rich people spoke Latin and Greek. Well, the Greek word for amber is electron, spelled with a K. So that's where we get our name for electricity from rich people's combs as they combed their hair and got flyaway hair. Okay, so Brian showed you this thing, um, V equals IR, called Ohm's Law. And let's focus in on current electricity, the stuff that happens when you have metals. So what is V? V stands for Volts, which is what pushes the electricity through a circuit. 
In the case of that plastic strip, as it's about 20,000 volts of static. Really, the only main use for static today is laser printers. Every little dot on the paper that comes out of the printer is put there by static. And so volts is the force that pushes the electricity around the circuit. It could be chemistry where metals want to lose electrons. It could be a magnet pulling electrons near a wire. We call that a generator. Or it could be just rubbing electrons off an atom as I just showed you. Now, what happens then is something happens. The pressure, the volts, the force can make electrons move. And that is called amps, represented by the letter I. So the pressure tries to make electrons move, but it's you, nothing's free. So what makes it hard to move is called resistance. And there's resistance to everything. So if you have a force and you push something, let's call it a mass or matter, then it tries to move. And that's an acceleration, but the matter resists it. For example, you push a bicycle, no problem. Push a dump truck with your bare hands, big problem. Mass resists the force. The force is trying to cause motion, but it's resisted by the mass. So I have a question for you. What do we call this? Brian told you V equals IR is Ohm's law, but what's F equals MA, which is exactly the same thing, only instead of volts, it's just a force. Instead of accelerating an object like pushing something, it's pushing electrons around a circuit, and the resistance is actually the amount of stuff that you're trying to push, the mass. These are exactly the same thing. This is called Ohm's Law. What the heck is F equals MA? That's right, it's called Newton's Law. And some of you would say, aha, but that's Newton's second law. No, it's not. It's Newton's law, period. There is no first law. What happens if F equals zero? Answer, nothing changes. That's the first law of motion. So how can you have a law for just F equals zero? And what's, so the first law is F is zero. Newton's second law is F is not zero. What else is there? So what's the third law? Well, the third law says you can't have one force. If I push you, you push back on me. If I'm standing on the earth and you're on roller skates, you accelerate and the mass of the earth, enormous, has just a tiny acceleration. So two forces are always acting, but you just don't often notice one of the forces because the mass is the planet Earth. So very simple. Volts is the unit for electrical pressure. What do you think the unit for force is? Whose law was this? That's right, Isaac Newton. So here's the deal. Here's a mass of one, one kilogram. What force makes it accelerate with an acceleration of one meter per second per second? Answer a force of one. One equals one times one. One what? What are we going to call it? This is kilograms. This is meters per second per second. That's a mouthful. So they made up a new name and they called it 
newtons. Now the acceleration of gravity is almost 10. So the force on this right now called its weight is 9.8 newtons or actually very close to 10. Okay, so here's a Newton, 10 Newton force from a one kilogram mass. And here's a meter. So if I were to take this force and lift it, I'm doing work. And work creates energy and Newtons lifted through meters is called joules of energy. So here we go. So I'm going to lift this 10 Newton force one tenth of a meter. And now the question is, would you put your finger under that? This has one joule of energy. And when I do this with students, they will usually put their fingers there. So here's 10 Newtons of force, one tenth of a meter, 10 times one tenth equals one. This is called one joule, J-O-U-L-E of energy. Pow! One joule would hurt. One joule is a lot of energy. Now, if I were to lift this the entire meter, that's 10 joules. If I did it quickly in one second, 10 joules per second is called 10 watts. Now, if we go back to our multimeter and the electricity and the bilge pump, the battery is 12 volts. The current going through was 2.4 amps. In electricity, volts times amps equals watts. So if you were to take 12 times two and a bit, you would get that our bilge pump is about 30 watts. Check this out. Lifting this, one of these per second is 10 watts. And I have to do it every second. And yet your bilge pump does 30 watts. That's 30 joules of energy per second. And we can run three build pumps plus the video camera. And there's no way we're going to blow a 15 amp fuse. Wow. Work equals force, 10 Newtons, times distance. In this case, one tenth. So there's one joule. Have a guess at how much energy there is in one candy bar. The answer is, and you'll never guess, a million joules or a megajoule. If we want to go into space, we don't drop weights and do slingshots. We burn stuff. Chemical energy is enormous compared to this, what we call mechanical energy. Winding a spring won't get you to the moon. Burning stuff, breaking chemical bonds will. So when you're working your control box and driving your um, ROV, you'll be using probably about 30 watts per bilge pump when you're blowing the maximum amount of water out that you can. 30 watts would be three of these lifted a meter every second. Aren't you glad that we live in a, an age when we've discovered how to use electricity? So what is an engineer? When you're in school, you're going to be studying science. You'll do biology, chemistry, physics. But so what? An engineer does biology, chemistry, and physics and uses that science 
to make useful things. So science is the facts, engineering is the application. And let me show you uh, using chemical engineering as an example. So here's some goop. This goop came from the ground, crude oil, chemical engineers worked on it, people that sat in chemistry class in high school, and here's a goop. Here's another goop. And I'm going to mix the two together. And what's going to happen is sort of like you tangling paper clips. The two chemicals are going to form a foam and link their molecules together. And next thing you know, you get something completely different. So those same two ingredients that make a foam, we'll see what happens with that in a minute. You can see it's beginning to foam. So here's some foam. So this is called styrofoam, and it's made in a similar process to this, where these materials mix together and form a pretty soft material that's full of bubbles. Useful engineering. But what do you do with it when you're done using it? This was packing material. What do you do with used packing material? So uh, it'll take a while, it'll foam. So what do you do with used packing material? Could you build a house using styrofoam? Well, let's find out. So, one of the problems with houses, particularly here in California, is fires. And when styrofoam burns, the foam goes away and you get, I wish you could smell the stink of that disgusting chemical goop, deadly, deadly smoke. So can you use styrofoam to build a house? Well, there's lots of styrofoam packing waste. So how do you stop it burning? So a guy in Austria spent about 10 years figuring out how to encase styrofoam pellets with burned dirt, also known as cement, concrete. And that's what I'm sitting on. This is called Rastra Block, and it's mainly styrofoam. And are you ready? So after 10 years of hard work, he figured out how to pelletize the styrofoam to make it fireproof. He turned it into giant building blocks, and that's what my house is made of. You glue these together, it's fireproof, absolutely fireproof. You put con you glue blocks together, steel, steel, fill it with concrete, and you have an incredibly strong house made out of waste styrofoam that is terrific insulation. There, I was just heating that. It heats up and cools down very quickly. It's called a low heat capacity. So when your house is hot, turn on the AC, boom, your house cools down quickly. This is R40 fireproof, termite proof, recycled building material. And our foam is beginning to do its thing. So, the pipe that you're using to make your ROV came from the ground, crude oil. And I'm going to quickly show you how the house got put together. So I built this house myself. I'm the owner, builder, architect. 
my wife is an artist, and this whole thing is 16 feet high walls built out of those blocks glued together, and it took 10 days to build this whole thing, gluing it all together, 10 days, and then four truckloads of concrete to fill all the holes, and there's our house.